valuable to follow. So right. he, just to catch people up, in case they didn't know, I was in high school, applied to a bunch of colleges. Yeah. Cornell was one of the ones I was accepted to. And unknown to me, the admissions office must have sent my application to him, saying, here's someone we want to attract. Can you do anything about it? He sent me a letter. A letter. I'm a 17-year-old high school kid in the Bronx. Said, dear Neil, I understand you're considering colleges, are you considering Cornell. If you want to come visit, come by. I'll give you a tour of the labs. You can find out what to, you make a decision. But how did he know that you were this prodigy? My application to college was dripping with the universe. Okay, right. And it wasn't because of him. I was na natively. So he, so he wasn't, it wasn't just like a shot in the dark. He was like, I see that this kid is the is the one. I, I had telescopes since I was. I, I but you dogs. put it in the application. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he read something oh, of yeah. yours and I, went, I, I, whoa, who is oh, this? Oh, yeah, I was in the astronomy club. Phenom. Yeah, right. I was on an expedition to study Stonehenge. I, right. I had all of this stuff in my. There was, it was, it was, my engagement with the universe was so thorough that it was a separate identity outside of whatever I was doing in a classroom. And so this, I had energy for it. And right. so he saw that and sent me this letter. Right. So the letter was not completely out of the blue. There was, there was, there was justification there from within the application. It was dripping with the universe. So. I showed it to my mother and she said, yeah, this is like legit. All right, let's do it. So got on a bus in December, okay, went up to Cornell, five hour bus ride that is. Right. And he met me outside the lab. We went in, met him and talked to him in his office. And what am I, I will never forget this. He did a no look reach. He went back like this. <laughs> <laughs> and it was one of his books. And I said, wow, that's badass. Oh, yeah. that's <laughs> you, you, you learned that too. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> to infinity and beyond. <laughs> he did a no-look reach, uh, and it was one of his books, and he signed it to me. Of course, I still have it. He says, to Neil, future wow. astronomer. Okay? Then the day ran long, and we uh, he drove me back to the bus station. It started to snow, not uncommon in Ithaca, New York. And... He was wondering, he said, if the bus doesn't come through, here's my home phone number. Did he touch you inappropriately? <laughs> <laughs> where is this going? Where is this going? Yeah, where is that? yeah come and spend the night, right? No. So a tent. <laughs> it's Ithaca in the winter. <laughs> so I so yeah, I got on the bus. It, it still came through. I've had people tell me afterwards that I should have just said the bus didn't come through and then spend the night. Right. <laughs> right. But 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 anyhow, so I I didn't end up going to Cornell because here's what I did. <laughs> the uh, at the time, I this is like inside baseball here, but I had subscribed to Scientific American, and my favorite part was about the authors. And people who write for Scientific American are scientists; they're not journalists. So about the authors, it tells them where they went to college, where they got their masters, where they got the PhD, and where they were on the faculty. This is total information. I got all the articles on astronomy and physics that I loved, and I made a grid for which of the schools I was admitted to had check marks from these authors. Wow. Where they'd gone to college, where <laughs> they were. And Harvard wow. won hands down. Okay. And I didn't know at the time that the, the Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, which is a government installation, was co-located with the Harvard Observatory. And so the, the numbers I was looking at was the sum of those two. But that's fine, because if you're looking for summer jobs and stuff, you know, it's all one complex of buildings. So I said, if I go to Cornell and he leaves, because I knew enough to know that professors move around, right. then I went to Cornell for a reason that then evaporates. Right. Whereas at Harvard, there's the, num the sheer number of people doing astrophysics, I thought was a stable, uh, stable, uh, community to walk into, and so I went to Harvard. Is it a community? Or do you have, are you most of your friends? Uh, we all know each other. There are not many of us. Not many astrophysicists. No. Hey, thanks for watching the clip. Hit the subscribe button now so you never miss out on our club random content that's posted daily.